Okay. Um, last week in the Bay, Bay Area Reporters, there was a very good article on 950 Market and the LGBT re historic resources that the project was destroying. And I read the article, I talked to the author of the article, and what it's done is two LGBT groups have filed notice of appeal of the project as proposed by the planning, planning department, 19-story um, building or 19-story office pro building at the special use district. What's happened is, and of course Sue Hester filed an appeal, um, what ha what's happened is the planning department has thrown out the uh, special use district plan. The planning department has thrown out the 19-story building. Um, they are now reworking the environmental documents and re-examining all environmental paperwork on 950 Market, including all LGBT historic resources of the site, as well as historic value of the Flatiron Building on the corner, which is over 100 years old by itself. And all this is being re-examined. A document should be out in a couple weeks or maybe a month. Um, I am on the list to get documents. But this is a very important update because it talks about the old Crow Bar, uh, which established in 1935 and had many exciting activities going on there. Um, and Flag Brothers, which was an original LGBT business uh, in the neighborhood, it was on the corner for many, many years. Um, and Nothing was being mentioned at all in the original documents about LGBT resources. And the planning and the developers had planned nothing to, to represent them. And the biggest issue that's in the paper uh, that I remember from my first 10 years in the neighborhood is what's commonly referred to as the meat rack, which was the uh, viewing grounds on Mark Street, Turk Street, and Taylor Street for the street hustlers that eventually moved to Polk Street. So it is being re-reviewed. History will be, LGBT is, historic values will be reviewed and examined, and new documents will be out in roughly a month or so. What was that, what year was that, Marvis? You're talking about the meat rack. And the planner is Sarah Jones, environmental reviewing officer, planning department. Marvis, the meat rack, what year was that? The meat rack. It sounds interesting. It sounds like it sounds like tenderloin meat rack. You know, yeah. that was how it was called. So so tenderloin meat rack. It does sound like nice. It sounds like so 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 Is that about when that was? Now all you use a butcher store. You know, then we have it all here. Yeah. Or before that. I'm just wondering what to, what well, date. The, the um, from the late 60s late into 60s. the um, early 80s, uh, Market Street, Turk Street was predominantly the area that you could find what you wanted to shop for. Um, on a personal note, I had very various encounters on the street, and I actually worked Old Crow Bar. When I first came to the neighborhood, back in the late 70s. So, uh, one thing I Well, what we'll do is... So, you're going to follow the VAR on this, too? Well, I, I have sent a, um, through Dennis, I sent an email letter to the editor, through, to the VAR, uh, stating the position the alliance took on the original plan. Um, I sent that open letter to the editor um, at a request of the author of the article in the bar. And it wasn't in this week's, but it should be in... in What's coming out on Thursday is BAR. Um, hopefully, it'll be in there. So, we had a response in about the 19 story project. I just wish we could find a way the to. The 19 story project was already not going to happen. They scaled that project way back. But, well, except that a way they were still They still have the special use district in the plan, but the building that they were going to build, they already, they already, they were going to build just down to the lower height. But, the planning commission wanted to remove the special use district because there was really nobody in the in the use was really interested in developing it in the special so there was really no reason to add that. It was, confusing. it was confusing because the environmental review made it look like 
you know, they were building this 19 built story building in the, the environment review, and that's why the planning commission agreed with Sue Hester and, and, and sent it back out. But there is also, because it is such a large project, I mean, in terms of the number of units and, and the overall impact it's gonna have in the community, they are really trying to, the community's been really working to negotiate a, a full community benefits agreement with them, unlike some of the other projects where we aren't doing, they're actually negotiating a, 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 a full community benefits package including, um, you know, uh, uh, hiring. job training, hiring, job, a job, uh, outreach and job, uh, edu you know, job development program. Um, the Taylor and Eddy Street, or Taylor and uh, Turk Street area of the project is actually going to be um, a community serving space dedicated to uh, area nonprofit, a resident, uh, a community serving nonprofit rent-free, permanently rent-free. Um, Depends on what it's going to be. If it's not something nobody uses, then it's not great. If it ends up being a, a garden <laughs> or something. Oh, I mean, this, this is, this is a, Depends on what it ends up being. It, it's really no hard. It's not difficult to find a, a nonprofit that wants a rent-free space. So, and then they're also, they're agreeing to do a community serving retail, at, at least one of the retail spots on the Church Street side to be community serving. Um, at a reduced rate, we're still in kind of like negotiations around how that's going to play out, but um, and what to what extent the community is actually going to have to say and who gets to go in there is still a part of the negotiation. But we're looking at around 85% of what would be the market rate, which I'm not sure how much help that's going to be, but we're still talking about that. Um, they're also uh, um, promising. Uh, oh, rather, those are small. They're still though, having an open space clause and kind of thing, or is that going to kind of? They're going to have a pass through. Like there's going to be a open kind of an open area on Turk Street and another one off of Market Street, and then there's going to be a pass through so you can public can pass through. They're going to try to use uh, some of the original cobblestones that are off of Market Street and the Market since Market Street's tearing some of that stuff out as the as the pavement through there to kind of tie it into the old neighborhood, um, but. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the biggest pieces that we're still working on the negotiations part, and they're still willing to negotiate with us around it, they're, we're still willing to talk about it, is how to, at, what, at what level they're going to do their um, inclusionary housing. So, the, and originally we were trying to ask for them to do a higher percentage and do it off-site, because we, uh, we thought that on-site BMR condo really didn't benefit the community that much. Um, they really were interested in trying to maybe do that if they could find another developer to do their portion of it because they obviously don't have a large enough portion offsite to actually build an entire project. But we were trying to match pair them up with another developer to maybe develop this parking lot down here on, on Jones because um, it's already been entitled. So the but that, I, I don't know, that there was some talk with Shorenstein and Randy Shaw, but the mayor's office wasn't really excited about doing that. So to get that done, we would really have to push the mayor's office to really kind of agree to that. They really weren't interested in doing it that way. Um, so we kind of back to the on-site again. So one of the things that we're talking about, and I don't know if you all might be interested in, you know, where you want to throw your hat into this, but maybe we're trying to consider asking them to try to push them, okay, if you're going to do on-site, do on-site rental instead of on-site condo. At least that way it's going to serve a, a, a you know, sort of a lower income portion of the population, you know, it would be a little more in line with what's in the neighborhood than, you know, a 90% AMI con, right? Because, you know, that's not really affordable to anybody we know. And certainly, um, by, by when you add in the association dues on top of that, you know, who, who's, who can really afford to live there, right? So. Uh, I mean, none of, none of the workers will be able to afford there either. I mean, exactly. The and workers, this is the, the, the half uh, of the unit is a hotel. So, yeah. you know. They, you know, they, they, the they did sign an agreement with Local 2, so that was one thing that came out of it. They signed an agreement with Local 2 for the hotel, oh, so oh, okay. the, jobs, the hotel jobs are all going to be targeted in the union, so they're all going to be union. So that was one good thing. One of the things that um, the letter I sent to uh, my department, she pointed out that I spent the height that they were proposing would put another wall 20-story buildings on the south border of the Tenderloin. 
And what you would what you came up what we end up with is the wall of high rises on the west side on Van Ness, the wall of high rises on the south side on Market Street, and a wall of high rises in Union Square. And if you add the wall of richness on Knob Hill, and what's in the middle? The ghetto. And that's and that reminded me very much of what Nazi Germany did to in Warsaw in World War II by building a 20-foot wall around the Jewish ghetto and packing thousands of people into the ghetto. This neighborhood has thousands of people in it. And yeah, so, I, I, I mean, I actually compare what their plan looked like on that based on what they had in their document. Yeah, that original plan to was ridiculous. What Germany did in World War II. Was the one in the, where the rich Germans actually bought into it? The rich Jewish people for recent stat or something like that? Were they so, actually convinced Jewish people to buy their own units? So there's some, some interesting issues just about that one block, and I want to name a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, that, that, that the original project they proposed was really way out of scale. Yeah, but there's some, there's some turf wars going on about that block. Um, the, the owner of the property, uh, uh, the owner of the property wanted to sit on the CBD board, and he's currently um, advised. He's currently a uh, honorary board member to the uh, Central Market CBD, but there should not be such a category, but there is because it's not in the bylaws. So I don't know how somebody becomes an honorary board member, and. Uh, the uh, Central Market CBD, it's not in the Central Market CBD, it's in the uh, Tenderloin CBD. Um, and uh, the uh, mural that's coming from 10, uh, there was going to be another thing uh, today, uh, 10, 10, 6, 5, whatever, 10, 48, 10, 28 market? Was, uh, they're, they're, they're having a meeting today about a mural. It's in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, and, no, it's at, it's at the it's at the it's at the it's at the Tenderloin Museum now yeah, today. Uh, anyway, the point being is that there's all these things going on, and that it's being sponsored through the ten, the the the, the um, Tenderloin that's being the, the funds for that mural. Some murals are going on. It's being done through the uh, um, Central Market CBD. So there's all these things going on, uh, but they're not coming to the neighborhood. They're just coming to when they think they should go. Going to the, uh, going, having a meeting at the, uh, like the Tenderloin Museum, uh, they're reaching out people through the internet. They're not reaching out to people through the community. So people are not coming to these meetings. And then they, and they were actually 10, 10, 28 was supposed to come to this meeting tonight, but instead is over there at the museum. See, so you know they, they say things and then they change them so quickly because it's whatever they think they need to do. Um, and us residents don't we not can't be in two places and we have preferences of, of trying to address more concerns because there's so many things going on. And um, the, I was really interested in hearing about um, that the uh, that the outreach meeting that took place over at uh, Salvation Army only six people showed up. So, you know, and because my concern was, well, outreach for whom and how was it notified? And so when people said they had these meetings, uh, you know, it, it's uh, more interesting, uh, like how many and who and what. Uh, um, and what we're seeing happen, because I, I, I've been very frustrated in the last month or two trying to get, because I run more than one meeting, trying to get people to come to meetings to do presentations. Um, we're competing now with people being able to look on the cell phone and see all the information they want because somebody writes an article on Hoodline or something. And so they don't even have to come to a meeting because it's all been reported. And so it doesn't need to be notified. That's what we're competing against. So people get all the information they want and they can write little comments under the article and all this information is being dispersed in the, in the formats. Whereas, you know, when it's in the newspaper, it, was, it had to be a letter to the editor. Now that we have something like Hoodline, which is, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with Hoodline, but it's, it's uh, many of the residents do not have internet access, and so they're not going to be reading up on Hoodline. Um, the other issue is, uh, as far as uh, 950 Market is, um, uh, I've talked to some of the business owners uh, that surround the property, and they're concerned about how, about how long the construction will take and it will hurt how, because of the construction, how it will hurt their businesses. 
And Melfi seems to be talking about that. They only talk about, oh, it's great for the neighborhood because it's going to be providing housing. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to create nonprofits. We don't, we have already too many nonprofits. So, you know, I, I think this is one of the main problems that we have down here is we can't keep on putting nonprofits down here. And uh, we don't have the correct kind of people planning this neighborhood. And they want to the, uh, choose the people that, um, the same people we have in front of the planning commission um, next, this Thursday, we have somebody that's written all these letters of support for a change in the planning code for this neighborhood, which is, should be on the agenda, by the way. Uh, and, uh, and they're all, uh, not one of those letters is a resident writing the letter. Uh, and that's gonna be on the, this Thursday, planning code changing our special use district to put massage parlors into the neighborhood. Again. Again. After See, so is that, the kind of, is that the kind of businesses we want? And, and, and it's okay with all the uh, nonprofits, such as uh, such as Tenderloin Housing Clinic, such as uh, um, Reality House West, such as, you know, all these people write the uh, these uh, are letters and the support, but, the, but they're, not, they're not connecting with the residents. So, uh, yeah, and Hastings wrote a letter. But it's focusing on a particular Japanese spa, massage place that wanted a massage license but couldn't. And they wanted to do personal massage. And they wanted to do that. So now we have this legislation. So, yes, so, so, the, so the, I'll just go down the list real quick because uh, that way it's, it's sunshine here uh, for, for that. Uh, Use for that change in the code, we have letters uh, from uh, uh, Adrian Hotel Patel, uh, Patel uh, from uh, a Piano Fight. These people are on the CBD board, uh, Tim Lee CBD board. Uh, David Stewart is also on the CBD board. Uh, Reality House West, uh, uh, Kathy Luper used to be on the board. And uh, Kevin, this guy, somebody named Kevin Fink, who's on the, uh, again, Piano Fight. Um, Nebio Ma Ma Mazur, who's uh, Central Towers. Um, somebody, another person from uh, Piano Fight, Rob. Uh, Tenderloin Housing Clinic. And uh, Tim Colin, who you saw on some of these pro pro projects that we just saw, who wants to weigh in on all the things in our neighborhood, who represents the, uh, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, Housing Action Coalition, which has nothing to do with the special use district, but you know, because that's really, uh, but but he wants to write a letter. And the funny part, I question his address because he says he lives in the 2200 block of Edge Hill Way, where uh, there's not 22 blocks of Edge Hill Way, because um, it's only it's only a, a winding road up a hill. It's not a, a 22 blocks up the hill. So uh, I, again, I haven't verified it, but I'm pretty sure he does. There's no two. It's a, it's a typo, or he, he thinks he owns the whole top of the hill. Anyway, I know exactly where it is because I grew up on that hill, and I didn't know there's not that many blocks. Okay. Um, so um, anyway, um, I don't know. I, I got this for you. Yeah. Is there any other reports you want to give? Um, I just thought it was very important to talk about because the special use district is going to be a front. It, it is days. very important because it will reverse uh, what we've had 17 years. Prior because while yes, it's very narrowed in scope and very precise how it's written, um, we've taken 18 years to get rid of 22 illegal established massage parlors that operated outside the law. And our vice department is still to this day trying to regulate and take care of and maintain the transparency of the legal massage parlors we have in the Tenderloin. And they've been doing that for over 30 years and they're still working on it because they don't want to work within the scope of the law. And opening it up again is going to bring all that problem right back to this neighborhood, which we've been really so to get rid of. Changes of the, the, the and it's really arguing that uh, the supervisor hasn't done any community outreach. She's done, she talks to property owners, 
She's talked to CBD people. She's talked to Calvary residents. Zip. 